Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in for Fed Supernova, hosted by Capital Factory and presented by Microsoft. Our discussion topic today is going to be human endeavors from Earth to Mars, a view into the coming decade. My name is Danae LaFleur. I'm the Senior Director of Partnerships at the ION. It is a hub for innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship here in Houston, Texas. So what do we hope to accomplish with today's panel? We want to give you um, some insight into some opportunities for your business and also into the aerospace industry and also to see what the future holds for the industry. We have a great selection of panelists today. We have Brigadier General Stephen Bucky Buto. He is the director of the Space Portfolio at the Defense Innovation Unit, or DIU. It's in Mountain View, California. Bucky was instrumental in setting up the DIU office in Austin, Texas. Prior to joining DIU, he was the vice chief of the Joint Staff California Military Department with responsibilities including cybersecurity, incident awareness, and innovation. Welcome to the panel, Bucky. Also, we have Sarah Sassy Dougalby. She is the CEO and co-founder of Venus Aerospace. Prior to launching Venus, she was Launch Systems Engineering and Mission Management Consultant at Virgin Orbit. She has spent much of her career growing multiple high-tech startup businesses. We are delighted to have you today, Sassy. And we have her husband, Dr. Andrew Dougalby. He is the CTO and co-founder of Venus Aerospace. He is also a lieutenant in the U.S. Navy Reserve. Prior to Venus Aerospace, he was head of launch operations at Virgin Orbit, where he led operational planning, mission control, tele telemetry, ground equipment, launch infrastructure, and payload operations teams. So thank you all very much for being with us today. We're really appreciative to, to have such an illustrious panel. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Good to be here. So, Bucky, I'm going to start with you. For mm -hmm. anyone who may not be familiar, please tell us the mission of the Defense Innovation Unit, DIU, and how can startups expect to work with you? The Defense Innovation Unit was started five years ago by then Secretary of Defense Ash Carter uh, to uh, accelerate the adoption of commercial technology to solve problems in national security and defense. And... Um, you know, we've had a long history of using commercial technology very successfully uh, across the government, including defense. Uh, but uh, we kind of fell out of favor, I think, uh, it became too complicated working with commercial companies like uh, Venus Aerospace. And so the Defense Innovation Unit is really uh, a charter organization to help promote and find better ways of bringing companies in, strengthening our national security innovation base, which is the new term we use for a collection of all the companies, uh, defense and commercial uh, to uh, supply us, and um, and to also um, uh, help the other services, other others within the defense space to to realize the great potential of working with uh, companies as you have in Texas uh, for space and all kinds of other applications. Very good, thank you so much. And Sassy and Andrew, give us an introduction um, about what Venus Aerospace is up to. So we're ultimately trying to build a space plane. This sounds pretty far-fetched, but we're, we're zeroing in on three key technologies that help enable this. So from a propulsion advancement in rocket engines to a new frame of hypersonics, as well as some leading edge cooling. And in each one of these along our path, there's some commercialization opportunities as we develop those technologies with, uh, you know, hopefully within the Department of Defense and commercially. And I understood that y'all mo recently moved your operations to Houston, Texas. Sassy, can you tell us why y'all made that decision? Sure. Um, it was a multi-factor, um, but the, the biggest thing is our theme as a company is home for dinner. Um, we want to be able to fly you to one side of the world and have you back in time for dinner. And then also as an organization, we want to have our employees be able to be home for dinner. So while we we're in California, we we're going to need to be a multi-location company. Whereas here in Houston, we're um, in discussions with the Houston Spaceport and we'll be setting up our um, location at the Houston Spaceport and that will enable us to, our employees can do their testing and rocket operations and everything at Ellington Field and still be home for dinner. And so it was the only location as an urban spaceport that enabled that capability. 
Excellent. Delighted to hear that. And I hope more aerospace um, innovation companies will take take the, pl the, <laughs> the, the path that you all took and set up locations here in Texas as well. Um, so, Bucky, tell me specifically, I have an aerospace company. I have an aerospace idea. How can I work with the DIU? What are the steps? Well, first thing, you can go to our website, uh, www.diu.mil. And, um, and read about uh, how to work with us. Um, and we, we are a, a doormat uh, red carpet for uh, new companies, but don't ask us what to build for us. Tell us how, what kind of commercial solutions that you're working on, uh, because what the Defense Innovation Unit does uniquely is we don't give uh, our solicitations or problem statements. How would, uh, again, going back to uh, Sassy and Andrew and be like, how would you get us to uh, Europe uh, and back in, in in less than eight hours, right? Or something of that nature. And then let the, let them tell us their story. What's their commercial business path? Um, how are they How are they focusing to solve that problem? Uh, and so we're looking exclusively at how we utilize those commercial uh, capabilities. So we don't redefine the company or take it off of its business path. Um, the best the best uh, commercial companies that we work with today are all pursuing uh, a, bit, a well conceived business plan, and we need to give them the latitude to do do that, and then uh, and apply those commercial technologies to uh, to our defense needs. Very good. So, Sassy and Andrew, tell me, have you had experience working with the federal government, and then what has that been like for you? And what type of advice would you give other founders who maybe don't have a defense background, a military background, haven't worked with NASA yet? So tell us about your experience and then what advice you would give other founders. Certainly. So on my, my other day job as a reservist in the federal government acquisitions. So I, I do have some inside view of uh, the inner workings and it's very strange contrast to the civilian side, of course. As a, I was a professor for almost 10 years, and so I, I you know, saw sort of the federal granting institutions, NSF, things like that. And then now as a commercial company, we've won a couple of small business grants, you know, small business innovation research, SBIR and STTR, the, the kind of academic side of that. And so it is, uh, it can be challenging to, to link up with the government, that is for sure. You know, these programs are out there, and, and oftentimes it's... Um, to contrast it with venture capital, it, it's it's still very slow, but I can see the effort the government is making to try and change that that scenario and and you know get in on technologies or like General was saying, leverage what is already going on a, a solid commercial plan or these companies that are, mm -hmm. are doing something interesting and just you know tweaking a little bit to become defense related. Well, and I can add, so we applied when we first started Venus, which was we left Virgin Orbit in June of 2020 and pretty quickly applied to an NSF seed fund grant. And we still haven't heard. Mm -hmm. And that was nine months. Well, nine months in the world of a small startup. I mean, that's an eternity. The mm -hmm. amount of time that we the amount of work we have accomplished in nine months. Yeah. Um, and so a slow process working with the government, it, being honest, it makes it very difficult. You know, we're, we're sprinting and would love to partner with people that can sprint with us. So on that note, um, we have a solicitation that's open right now on our website uh, called Modularity for Space Systems. Uh, it will be posted for about a week and a half. We'll close it. And it's our goal to award a contract within 60 to 90 days after that closing now. So basically, um, in, in less than a third of the time of the traditional uh, funding models, uh, we do that, and the reason, exactly like Sassy said, is because we have to figure out how to operate at commercial speed. Uh, we can't we can't slow these companies down as they're in a global competitive environment, and um, and they they want to get the best talent and retain the best talent. You know, they can't do that if they're uh, a year out from getting a check uh, for the work. On the benefit side, the positive side is that most of this government money is non dilutive. In other words, you know the, uh, whether it's a grant or uh, we do um, other transactions. Uh, so we do prototyping. Uh, we don't pay companies to do research and development. We, we're using those funds to assess the military utility of their commercial solutions, a big difference. So we don't try to touch their intellectual property. And, and it makes it easier to negotiate out terms 
uh, on a contract that looks like a commercial contract uh, because it's an other transaction. We're not alone with this. Uh, the, uh, the Space Force has the uh, Space Enterprise cons uh, Consortium. And so uh, that's a little bit different as a consortium model. So you have to join the consortium, but then you're, uh, as a small company, you can participate in, uh, in larger efforts that way. The DIU effort is really very simple. It's like, what do you do? How can we work with you? And then we just work with you one, one v one. So, uh, very good. Thank you. That's excellent information to have out there. Um, Bucky, another one for you. Given the level of ingenuity that many tech entrepreneurs and non-traditional small businesses have exhibited over the last decade, how will the Department of Defense leverage venture capital to help integrate these emergent capabilities into mainstream defense portfolios? Well, you said the right word there, leverage. Uh, the silliest thing uh, that uh, I think, if we have a need for a capability that we can get from the commercial market, we should never build a government design built and sustained or bespoke uh, capability because it, it just costs too much money to do. Uh, yeah, uh, and it's much more cost effective and commercial technology tends to remain coupled tightly with the, whatever the state of the art of technology is. When the government builds something, it's not going to change until the government decides it wants to update it. So mm. a lot of our legacy capabilities become irrelevant or obsolete in a very short period of time that way. But um, but uh, we we are significantly leveraging uh, private. I think we have something probably close to three quarters of a billion dollars of, of um, contracts across six portfolios at DIU. But that money is leveraging over $11 billion of, of uh, investment from the private sector. And, and that investment's going into US companies. That's not government money. So, the, uh, so we're, we're riding the coattails of, of, um, um, of a growing new space uh, commercial sector um, and, and, and other sectors uh, by doing that, which is very, it's a good thing for the taxpayer. So I'll toss this back over to um, Venus. Tell me, what was your funding journey like? Did you find it easy to get VC funding for an aerospace company? Tell us, tell us about that. Sure. Path. Um, we joke we had to kiss a lot of frogs to finally find our prints. <laughs> so it was yeah. it was a pretty long journey just mm -hmm. trying to find out who is willing to fund deep tech. We are not on a short term journey. We are not an enterprise SaaS software system that you give us a chunk of money and we'll have this incredible system that's ready to go in a year. Um, and so finding the um, correct investors that are willing to say, I'm in on a seven year journey, or I'm on a long term journey, and I don't owe that back to my mm -hmm. LPs or that LPs are patient. Limited um, partners. Limited partners, sorry, yes. Um, and so it took us, we, I think we ch um, charted 180 conversations. Yeah. You know, when yeah. anybody that we would talk to, we would talk about, and we'd always ask, well, who else should we be talking with? Um, and it took us a, it took us a while over six months of pretty continuous fundraising. But mm -hmm. once we finally found our people, it's been a fantastic partnership. And we found a group of investors that are deep tech and aerospace related. And um, we're excited to have them on this journey with us. And, and add value at the same time, right? It's not just uh, money. Yeah. Right, right. It's about the support and the the helping with the business plan and having bringing their contacts to the table. I think sometimes people are thinking that if I could just get the money, but your investors bring a lot more to the table than money when you get the right ones. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, it's so, very important that uh, that companies do diligence on the investors. Uh, there's investors that are like real estate; they want to flip this house, and so you don't want to get. In, uh, investment from somebody who wants to flip your company in two or three years, like it's a software company, uh, it'll just ruin it. And so, uh, again, Sassy and Andrew are exactly right. There are there are all kinds of different investors, and there are investors that specifically target the space sector, and um, and and yeah, you can help uh, provide some information and uh, prepare you to uh, reach out to some of these folks as well. Because we have a we also have a vested interest to in make sure that you know that uh, you're getting a friendly uh, you know, investment. There's a lot of uh, uh, problematic investment out there because there's uh, uh, other nations that, that uh, use the investment as a way to, uh, to access uh, intellectual property and, and take it offshore. 
So, um, so we have to be careful for that as well. Thank you. That's very good advice. I want to switch gears just a little bit. Um, a lot of focus has been on diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. Um, one of the things that we're doing at the ION is we have a minority business enterprise aerospace innovation hub. And it's a grant that we got from the MBDA. And we're looking for companies, small businesses and tech companies that would be interested in working with us in our incubator so that we can show them how they could either pivot something or use something that they already have to be able to go after potential contracts in the aerospace industry. Um, that application is launching very soon. And so you can visit the IONS website to hear more information about that. So I'll turn it over to Bucky, who'll tell us what type of partnerships you guys are working on to expand the pool of people that are interested in going into aerospace. I believe you have something with academic institutions. If you could tell us about that. Yeah, well, this is very exciting. And this is not a new problem. It's, a, it's, a, it's an enduring problem that um, won't go away unless we put some focused energy on it. So I really applaud what you're doing with ION uh, to create these opportunities, which is exactly what, what uh, we should be doing. Um, the, uh, the Defense Innovation Unit is made up of three organizations, uh, DIU proper, which I talked about earlier, and we're the ones who write checks and, and work with small companies like uh, Venus Aero. Now we have another element called National Security Innovation Capital, and that was set up, and this is the first year it got funding from Congress, and that's to help provide some seed funding to early hardware technologies that are maybe a little bit too early for, uh, for the commercial market and, and venture investment. But but they'll soon they'll soon be in that place. So that's another solution set that's good for companies like Sassy and Andrews. But then the other organization we have is called National Security Innovation Network, and this is how we reach out to academia and uh, and engage there to uh, to get uh, the best and brightest students, the most motivated students, to try to get them interested in in tackling problems, uh, national security and defense, and and uh, across the aerospace enterprise. So. Um, uh, you tell us how we can help you. I, I think this is, you know, it's a, it's a team effort. I will say the, uh, you know, uh, Silicon Valley has been struggling with this for a while as, as well documented. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, uh, Andrew and I are both, uh, in, in the service and, uh, the services tend to be a little more, uh, diverse than, than the companies that we deal with. So we're, we're trying to set a good example, but, uh, we can do better as well. Thank you so much for that. Um, so and we just have a couple minutes left. I want to take a view towards the future. Um, Sassy and Andrew, tell me what you guys are most excited about. What's going on in the field that's really going to be interesting in the next decade? So with every major company that has sort of retarded aerospace, whether it's, it's the success of SpaceX or Blue Origin or now Virgin Orbit has reached space and there's a couple other launch companies, right? just, just even looking at the launch portfolio, you have now new generations of engineers who understand how to do hard things. You also have companies who understand how to navigate, right? Navigating a long process is not easy to manage that the risk portfolio, what to invest in, how to hire. And so with every generation of company, you can then take larger leaps. And so as I look forward, you know, 10, 20 years, I'm excited for what the entrepreneurial system will generate and, and what companies will then let us reach out into the solar system, get, get you know, not just get to Mars, but mine that asteroid or send solar power satellites. Uh, and right, there's a tremendous potential with every round that sort of relearns. If you, if you go back in history, the the things that we learned during the Manhattan Project or the Apollo program of how to do really hard things, we have sort of now relearned in a different setting with new technologies, and it's 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 super exciting. Excellent. Bucky, I'll give you the final word. What are you looking forward to in the future? Well, uh, one other way of saying what Andrew just said, without risk, there's no reward. Um, I, I think uh, the wonderful, uh, who doesn't watch, you know, every flight of uh, the Starship and, uh, right? And uh, failing is learning, you know, failure is quitting. And there's a big difference. And so the, the thing is, is that we can't be, we have to, have be wide eyes wide open and go forward and not be afraid uh, to to try things because those we our successes will come through the path of many failures. I will say 
uh, for the commercial companies out there um, who are watching, you don't have to have a fully integrated solution. If, if you're working on something, uh, it could be a component, it could be a key supply uh, chain item uh, for this, uh, this rapidly growing industry uh, that's doing everything from launch to satellites to um, in-space transportation and logistics. Um, be a part of that of that of that uh, effort and do your piece, and, and you'll find there's there's money and there's contract mechanisms for you to uh, to bring your best ideas forward. Thank you so much. Um, thank you all. This has been a great conversation. We look forward to hearing more from you and having more founders um, connect with the DIU to tap into the resources. And Sassy and Andrew, you guys are a great inspiration for other founders so that they can see how they can make their dreams um, to work in this space a reality too. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thanks.